by the type of loan Huddersfield have. That 2019 funding was third-party bank loans, not from the owner. As this has been paid down, this has left just over 40 million due to the director at the time. You must be a bloody idiot to, to want to come here to lend at season. Uh, fortunately, that's what I am really. So it's uh, <laughs> it does. Welcome once again to an exciting journey through football club finances as we untangle the financial web of the football club revealing how off-field performances measure up to those on the field. This week we're heading to Yorkshire to explore Huddersfield Town's financial journey over the last decade. Rewind to 2013 when Huddersfield returned to the championship. They consolidated in the second tier until 2017, shocking the system with victory in the playoffs, securing a trip to the Premier League. The fairy tale continued as David Wagner steered Huddersfield to survival the following year. However, second season syndrome hit the Terriers, picking up just three wins leading to relegation. The Terriers would regroup in the second tier but face heartbreak in 2022, losing the playoff final to Nottingham Forest and with that another crack at top flight football. Over this period, the John Smiths witnessed a managerial merry-go-round. Eleven different gaffers guided Huddersfield over these ten years. As always, if you know their names, join in the chorus with me. Grayson, Lillis, Eyre, Robbins, Powell, Wagner, Hudson, Seward, Cowley, Schofield, Cabrera. Whew. Now let's shift our focus away from the field. What unfolded behind the scenes? As always, the Premier League years bring in extra income. Huddersfield gained an additional 110 million in 2018. Even with COVID, it's evident that being a former Premier League club in the Championship has advantages over and never was. Parachute payments added approximately 90 million in the last three years. Clear jumps are noticeable by league position between the Prem, Parachute and Pre-Prem years. On average, top flight football brought in five times as much as the championship. A great day for all of us. It's a day of celebration. Now what about profit? Before realising the Premier League dream, it's all losses. As seen with other teams, promotion costs hit before a ball is kicked in the top flight. Huddersfield incurred 12 million in bonuses and other costs. First year Premier League football once again is the peak for the bottom line at the John Smiths, with modest profits and losses in subsequent years. By league position, there's a cluster of small losses in that bottom half of the championship, but that first year in top flight tips the scales. The Terriers averaging 17 million profit for their two years in the Prem. So how have Huddersfield managed costs? Let's explore this in our PL walkthrough. Prepare your timer, grey out that revenue, and let's dive into start. Huddersfield appeared to have managed the wage bill a bit better than many other clubs across the divisions. While wages increase in the Prem, they are well within the additional revenues earned. And after relegation, they halved the wage bill. Since 2018, they've maintained staff costs below 70% of revenue in all years. No small feat. Did this cost management impact on field performance? Let's examine how much the Terriers paid in wages for their points. In the Championship, each point cost just £300,000 on average. However, in the Premier League, the first season saw them secure safety at under £2 million a point. But that following year, those 16 points cost £4 million each. And what about operating costs? Well, these start consistently at around £7 million until promotion to the Premier League, then fall back down following relegation. But from an EBITDA perspective, it's hard to argue against the benefits of Premier League football reverberating long after relegation. Next up, stadium facilities. These increase as the club invests in infrastructure. Don't move the needle significantly, so let's move on to transfer fees. Huddersfield turned profits before their Premier League stint, but after that the dynamics shift. Expenses from squad investment peaked at nearly 30 million in 2019. Post-relegation, this begins to unwind as their stay in the championship extends. So there we go, Huddersfield profit picture complete, with the highlight being that first season in the top flight. They averaged a 13% operating margin from those two years, compared with a 24% loss in the championship. This is hard, I tell you. So what about cash? As always, we're examining the combo of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by those EBITDA line items, mirrors the PL. Cash steadily flows out in the championship, but Premier League football flips the script, with cash flooding in. It's a clear distinction by league position, with an average of 33.5 million coming into the John Smiths when it hosted top flight football. Now, turning our attention back to transfers, it's pretty much the opposite story. In the championship years, Huddersfield has made cash more often than not. The 
but the attempt to build out a Premier League squad resulted in hefty outflows in 2018 and 19. Over the 10 years, the Terriers spent a net 61.5 million on players, driven by those two years in the top flight. So where does that leave Huddersfield? Well, look at this trajectory. Cash flowing out of the club in those initial championship years. Cash came in the door in that first successful season in the Prem, but returned to outflows in the relegation year. Huddersfield has even brought cash in in the last three years, even in the face of COVID. Over 10 years, the club has spent a mere 7 million net and was one result away from returning to the top flight. So with that in mind, how has the financing been? Steady funding accumulated until promotion. That first season allowed the Terriers to take money out, only to increase sharply the next year as they fought to stay in the league. Despite relegation, Huddersfield has continued to pay down their debts, meaning only 33 million has been put into the club over these 10 years. However, this does not tell the whole story. If we look by the type of loan Huddersfield have, that 2019 funding was third-party bank loans, not from the owner. As this has been paid down, this has left just over 40 million due to the director at the time. You must be a bloody idiot to, to want to come here to end the season. Uh, fortunately, that's what I am really. So it's uh, it does. More on that in a moment. So what's happened since? On the pitch, Huddersfield fell away to the bottom half of the championship, still running the managerial merry-go-round at full tilt. Schofield again, Fotheringham. Pellack, Warnock, Moore at the time of recording. OK, we've got some breaking news. It comes from the Championship and Darren Moore has been sacked by Huddersfield Town. Off the pitch, rumours of cash flow issues and possible administration circulated. Huddersfield changed ownership with American businessman Kevin Nagel, continuing the trend of US investment in English football clubs. Previous owner, Dean Hoyle, was said to have written off that 40 million of debts owed to him. So will the change at the top enable Huddersfield another crack at top flight? We'll just have to wait and see. Until next time.